We have learned through the parable of the sower that the word of God does not change. The word is one and it has been the same through centuries and centuries. For all eternity the word remains the same, just as God remains the same and he does not change. His word is the same. It is the word that sustains the ground underneath your feet. Yes, because if you stop and think that the world, this planet Earth, floats upon nothing, the Earth floats upon nothing and travels in a speed that is hard for us to imagine with our minds. But still, it's firm under our feet. It does not go with no direction in the universe. It has a direction, a trajectory, because it obeys the word of God, the law, the laws, the rule, the universe. So if there's a law, there's a legislator, am I right? If there's a law, there's a word, somebody who opened their mouth and said that. And God, through his word, is the one who determines that the earth may go in its course. So the word of God does not change. The word is one. However, the ears and hearts of those who receive it, those who hear it, these ones can change. And the result being different in each person from the word, but it does not depend on the word, but on the heart of the person who receives it. How the person receives this word. So the parable of the sower shows us this different type of listeners. Those who receive the word with joy, emotion, how nice, what a strong word, let me post it. Soon the person posts, shares it, they put it on a t-shirt, quickly they embrace the word, but they don't remain. And then there's that seed that fell on stony ground, but the person had no roots. They grew quickly, but the roots had no depth that Jesus explained that this word, this seed, does not last long because of the anxiety, the troubles, the tribulations, the persecutions, the person quickly gets offended, someone comes to them and says, oh, are you a believer now? Oh, are you going to that church? That's enough. You're not going to do this or that because you have become a Bible person? That's enough. Any offense, any comment that their way of life based on the Bible towards them, it's enough for them to give up on the word and to embrace the approval of their friends. And there was that seed that was sown among the thorns. Jesus said, the seed sown among the thorns, which means those who hear the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. These ones... We have many, all the four seeds represent a great amount of people, but this third seed that was sown among the thorns, it represents many people who more riches, more distractions this world presents, so harder it becomes for the person to focus on the word of God. Nowadays, the person goes to dress themselves, to go to work, early in the morning or for something else, they have dozens, dozens of outfits, dozens of shirts, dresses, trousers, belts, shoes. They have many clothes that they look at them and say, what will I wear? 
Back in the days, people had just a few clothes. Nowadays, people buy the clothes in three months, it's outdated because there's the summer trends, the winter trends. So what they buy today will be outdated very soon. And the summer trend will not be the same next year. So the cares of this world multiply, they multiply. Back in the days, you had two free TV channels to watch, a few radio stations to listen to. Today you have literally an infinite number of channels, content that you can connect, that you can watch on your mobile phone, TV, uh, podcasts, videos, social media, infinite screen. It does not end. So, this verse that says, Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. This verse, nowadays, multiplied these cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. It multiplied because people today have way more than any other generation before them. You who listen to me, you follow me, you have materially speaking, most probably, by the standards of your grandparents, you're rich. Have you stopped to think about it? By the standards of our grandparents, we are rich, because our grandparents did not have what we have today. But you think that you are poor, you are not satisfied with what you have, and you will never be. You will never, because this is the human being. It's a bottomless pit. Whatever you throw in will not hit the bottom, because the human soul is insatiable. By the things of this world, the water of this world is insatiable. That's why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you really want to satisfy your thirst, you must drink from the water that I will give you, because from the water you have been drinking so far, you will never satisfy your thirst. You will never. So the world brings to people anxiety, the greed for more, to show more, to do more. And where is the Word of God in all that? Where is the Word of God? It's written. The Word is choked by all this the person is worried about and becomes unfruitful. It does not bear fruit. So it is worse for the person to listen to the Word and to choke with the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches because they have no ears to hear, because they have the sensation that they know it already. They know the word, they memorized a few verses, they know the biblical story, so they have the impression that they know the word of God. And then they become more resistant. If you speak about the Bible to them, they become resistant. No, I know, I know it already. I know it. In reality, keep something with you. To have understanding about something, it's not necessarily to know something. To know something is to do it. I'm certain that you will never feel comfortable to allow yourself to be operated on by a doctor that was graduated in university, but after he left, the university he went to work in a restaurant. He never practiced medicine, he studied. He passed all the tests of medicine, but he didn't practice it. Today he works in a restaurant, he's a chef or the owner of a restaurant. He does not practice medicine. And then you need to go through surgery. Would you choose this doctor? You wouldn't. In the same way, there's no point of you knowing all about the Bible but if you don't practice it, if you don't do it, it makes no difference in your life. 
none. Quite the contrary, it harms you. Because you carry the name of one who knows it, the illusion of knowing the word, but in reality, the word is unfruitful in your life. What is needed for you to do? It's needed for you to humble yourself, to become like a child, and to be aware how many distractions this world has been bringing to you, and that you may place the word in the place that it deserves, that it should be in your life, which is the most important place. To take care of the word of God in your heart and mind, as the good sower takes care of the seeds in the good ground, waters it, takes care of it, removes the weeds, protects it every day, that it may bear fruit. This is how the Word of God must be in you. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.